How's it going everybody? And thank you for joining me for some more mechanical misadventures. Today we're going to be taking apart this Chinese clone of a Yanmar L100, stripping it all the way down to the crankshaft and giving you a look on how to disassemble this thing and what's inside. So a little bit about this motor. This is a 10 horse air-cooled diesel. It is a Chinese clone of a very popular Yanmar L100. So roughly 10 horse. This particular one's got a lot of information on the side. This is a 418 F86. That 418 denotes the, um, the displacement, 418cc. So this is a big boy. And it was made by Wee, Wee H Power. And it was made August of 2012. That makes it the newest engine in this garage. So I scored on this engine. This engine was a literal fire sale. It was in a um, generator, sort of enclosed style generator, and it was for sale for a hundred bucks. And I drove down to this guy's place to pick it up, and the guy's house had been condemned, unfortunately for him. It looks like there was a fire. They couldn't repair it, so the house was condemned while repairs were made or weren't made. Lucky for me, I guess, all of the stuff was for sale for super cheap. 100 bucks for this generator. The dude gave me a hand hauling it in. He, w he wasn't a big guy. He was hoping I would have help, but I didn't have help on such short notice to scoop that deal. And he helped me get it into my car. And you know, I just, it's a tough place to be. I felt bad for the guy. I said, here, for your help, here's 150 bucks. Why not? You know, thank you for helping out. You didn't have to. And on that run, while I was getting some parts, it was pretty funny. I, I rattled over to the next place in my truck to get um, some more diesel components. And I talked to the guy that's there, picking up an injection pump, yak it up with him for a little bit. He was selling a $150 injection pump. And he looks at me and he says, you look like a man who could use 50 bucks. <laughs> and he sold me the injection pump for $100. So that's probably the quickest karma turnaround I've ever gotten. But that's neither here nor there. It's just a funny anecdote for this, uh, for this motor. You're probably wondering why I got to take it apart. Because if you look at it, it looks pretty nice. Why are we going to be stripping it all the way down like this? Well, this is why. This output shaft is like a one and an eighth diameter shaft with a taper fitting. And I need to get this cut down, turned, to a one inch diameter and have a keyway cut in it. And unfortunately for me, the easiest way to do that is to take it apart. But it's a good opportunity to crack in here, take a peek at what's going on, and maybe learn a thing or two. This engine has kind of always been on my engine bucket list. I've always been uh, interested in these and I've wanted the chance to take one of these apart and get a better idea of how they work and here we go. Now's that chance. I actually did fire this thing up on the ground once. This runs at 3600 RPM, but that, that is adjustable. I did get this thing running, so I know that it works. And moreover, I know that if I put it back together and it doesn't run, that um, I messed up somewhere. But without further ado, let's crack into it. Boss comes in late and he can't make a stink while I print all my manuals with company ink. So here we go, I got this big thick old Yanmar repair manual. That's gonna be guiding my way through. I got a nice clean work area. That's probably the most critical. And I got a place to put all my stuff. So we're gonna be staying organized. This is the first thing to do is to pull off this air cleaner. So we're gonna do that. I've noticed for a lot of these other Yanmar and Yanmar clone videos, they're done by people that seem very knowledgeable, but for the most part, they've been um, like, either fast motion or not very well explained or from far away. So hopefully the idiot cam right here will provide you a nice close up view. So how I'm disassembling this thing. Those look like tens. There's a lot of grade eight bolts on this in places they really don't need to be. I don't know if this engine was made under license. Some of them were, some of them weren't. Um, the fact that this company H power no longer <laughs> seems to exist makes me think that it wasn't so these are 10 mils and this engine is super clean all these bolts are clean the motors clean even the um 
exhaust port is super clean. I highly suspect that this generator had very few hours on it. And that's good, that's good news for me. It means it's gonna come apart nice and easy. And it should have a lot of life left in it. Nope, two long shoulder bolts on the bottom and one short one up top. So there we go. Yeah, you can see how clean that is in there. Next step is to pull off this housing and the rip cord. Those are also 10 mils. We got four. They got a big rubber bushing on each side. Looks like that wants to stay with it. Fine by me. Here we go. Next, I'm gonna pull this basket off. This is held on by four 10 mils. This is not being held by that big nut in the middle. So if you're adding a pull cord, it can be taken off and put back on without messing with your flywheel bolt. So that flywheel bolt is pretty tough, but this ended up being the setup and I think just popped it loose. It would have been much easier with a rattle gun, but if you only have basic hand tools, that's how you make it work. Just gonna get it to here because I'm probably gonna need the puller and we'll see if I didn't just bind that way in there. Nope, came out. Didn't damage anything either. I got some bad news, the puller doesn't fit. I thought it would go through these. It probably would, but it looks like the uh, stator or whatever alternator is behind it. So we're just gonna give it some wax. Just knocked this flywheel loose. And what I did was I pried on it right here on the strong stud where the starter was, and I whacked it there. And um, that didn't happen quickly. Let me show you what you can't do. You can't grab a three jaw and stick it in like this through these holes, which is what I thought you could do because there is the alternator back there. So, wasn't able to do that. I wasn't able to grab on it with one of these two jaws, because there's two jaws. I wasn't able to put this basket in and grab onto the three, the grab onto it with either the three jaw or this one. So it was just uh, monkey style, just prying. But it did come loose. There's our alternator in there. See with that seal that I am gonna have to take that keyway out. And it might not be happy about that, but that doesn't matter. We're getting it. Yank this valve cover off. I have heard a rumor that one of the way they make these Chinese clones so cheap is that they don't put valve seals on them. So if you end up with one of these, it's a good thing to um, put a valve seal on it from whatever it's a clone of. Now I'd like to see that, or not see that if there's no seals. Let's see, what are we gonna get here? I see a valve seal on that. That's right in there. You can see it's a little spring clip. So, not unwelcome, but there we go. This, if you're familiar with smaller engines, but maybe not diesels, this is the cold start. If you don't know, a diesel engine has much higher compression than a gas engine. And so having a pull start on a diesel is a pretty big ask. So what they've done to remedy that is they have this little cam on the switch. And what that does is it goes here on the exhaust port 
and it just pushes it in it pushes it in and what that does is it just lets all the air go right out it reduces the compression makes it much easier to pull eventually the connecting rod will the connecting rod excuse me this push rod will push up on that it'll drop the rocker down and this cam will be let go it'll click back up and then it will have all of its compression these Looks like there's two head bolts and two head studs. These are 19s. Keep your tools a little cleaner, huh? Hmm. It's strange that that's not a nut. They made it a closed nut. Wonder the reasoning behind that is all right that's everything on the head off and right there the uh, push rods basically pushed it up there better be a head gasket on this the two red dashes is the intake Shouldn't be too hard to remember that, especially since you have it on video now, huh? All right, pulled out these. Looks like the little ball points down. There are lifters. Look at that, still pretty clean in here. This is a fun head gasket. I'd rather not reuse this, but um, I'm gonna keep it. And it is copper too, so it theoretically is reusable. And if that wants to stay, it can stay. Yeah, this thing is clean. Look at that. I'm pretty happy. Pretty hap hap happy. The manual says the next thing we do is pull off this injection pump. The diesels don't work with a carburetor. They gotta have a high pressure injection pump. And that's what this is. I'll get you a better idea when it comes out. Now this is shimmed up here so it looks like it's got a couple of gaskets that hold it in oh there's this side and this rides on the uh, camshaft in there mm, that should go somewhere special I'm gonna put that in a ziplock bag and here's the shims like I said there's a couple of them that's because you need to set the the depth on that. Let's pull all these case bolts off. These are all 12s. And there's like, without exaggeration, a million of them on here. Took all those case bolts off, including these two. Not sure what they do. It's uh, I'll send to peel this bad boy off. They have all these case splitters, but nowhere good to actually brace on. Okay, it sounds like the metal gasket is coming off. There we go. Came off pretty unevenly. Yeah, I don't think there's any shot of you reusing that. All right, there's our dipstick right here, this orange thing. Here, this thing actually has an oil filter. So that's the oil filter right there. It's a little mesh. That was some locating pin, and these two in the middle you did have to remove. There was some reinforcement there. This is the governor. So these three bolts right there, right here that I was concerned about, probably have like a circlip or something behind them to deal with the governor. Okay, the next thing we take out is this camshaft. I do wanna show something though. So if you see right there, there's two on this side and one dot on that side. That's how they're timed. All the gears in this motor are timed like that. Just trying to lift up here. There we go. We got these lifters. 
these are what go on the push rods which go up there go down to the valves uh, these should be the same size but i'm also going to label them now i don't 100 percent remember but this the side closest to me is getting two dashes and i believe that was the intake side same as the other one and if not the uh, video evidence will tell you Next, we are going to line up the counterbalance. If you see way back in there on that gear, it's a similar thing. The one goes between the two right there. So I'm just going to get it like this. It's pretty tight in there, but it's coming out. So I think I got it. It's just coming really slow. I take this pick stick it right here and then I push up and then over here just trying to wiggle it out and it does seem like it's coming that made a very promising sound we're no longer engaged to the crankshaft man So this con rod is another thing that's directional. You should be able to look at it and tell, but just in case, mark in red here, on the side facing the throttle plate. Now these are 13s, it looked like. Ooh, that is on there. Go. That's one tight fit. And that's just some red Loctite. There's red Loctite everywhere in this thing. Probably because it's a it's a shaky little boy. So I think the mistake I made on trying to pull this piston out was that I didn't clean off this carbon ring. And it goes to show you should read the instructions. Because wouldn't you know it? The instructions say to clean the carbon ring. This um, this sleeve still looks really nice. There's like factory cross hatching on it. But uh, I'm just taking it off with this little wood piece. You can see I'm getting a fair amount of it. But I don't want to I don't want to be damaging any of the cross hatching or the marking. If it was a little bit more messed up, sure. But just gonna do something that's won't scratch or anything. All right, that's two rings. Look at that, she's pretty minty. And you can see the cross hatching in there. Well, I wasn't able to chisel it out, but I did grind it flat, so it should come right out, no problem now. Here's our retaining plate. And now, this whole thing should just tap out. Now here we go, what all the rest of that was for. Ta-da! So there we go, there is our Yanmar L100 clone, completely disassembled. We got the crankshaft out, just gotta peel that bearing off of it and send it to the machine shop. But this is as far apart as I'm going. This is a fun teardown, kind of. This is a little irritating. There was some stuff that um, is a little bit counterintuitive, but now I've learned, and hopefully having seen this video, you have learned as well. Hope this was informative, or at least entertaining. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Shoots.